you everyone for joining our webinar today. Really appreciate your time. Excited to talk about the potential of BBCRM um, integrated with PaperSave. I am Valerie Albertson. I'm the senior account executive. I work really closely with uh, mutual BlackBot customers with BBCRM, FE, and RE. We have a long-standing partnership with BlackBot and excited to uh, share the possibilities today with you all. I'm also joined by Julio Perez. He is our senior technical sales engineer. Um, you're in really great hands with him. He works really closely with our uh, BlackBot customers as well. And he's he's been with Pearsoft for um, a little over 16 years. So you're in really great hands. Um, and I'm gonna hand it over to him so we can kind of start diving into the agenda and the demo today. Thank you, Valerie. I really appreciate that and welcome everybody. So um, on today's agenda, we're going to dive in a little bit about PaperSafe for those that are new to, to PaperSafe. Welcome for those of 16 clients that are joining us uh, to learn a little bit more about what they can do with PaperSafe. Welcome back. Um, so first, first of all, we're going to talk about a little bit of explainers then how PaperSafe works for your team, along with uh, some use cases of how other organizations are using PaperSafe. Um, remember, we do have a Q&A section, so feel free to write down all of your questions there. Uh, we'll get to them as we go, or if we are uh, running out of time, we'll definitely follow up and, and get you some answers as we go along. All right, so a little bit about PaperSafe. Um, PaperSafe is a natively integrated revenue automation solution with centralized document management um, with an up to 100% accurate OCR, right? So PaperSafe sits within BlackBot CRM windows to provide an unparalleled donation management experience that has been tailored to BlackBot throughout 20 plus years of partnership, which is really one of the only out of the box integrated solutions with BlackBot, right? And some of our claim to fame, you know, higher uh, performance, uh, leaders in the small business world, high performance in Americas, uh, highest adoption uh, for the mid market, along with others. So we'll dive right into um, how PaperSafe works for your team, right? So one of the first things that I wanted to uh, focus on today is at our very core, as you heard a second ago, PaperSafe is a document management software, right? So PaperSafe has a native integration into BBCRM that is going to allow you and your users to have a central records repository for within BBCRM to reduce the need to do manual data entry, removing multiple steps in processes, and ultimately having that one spot repository regardless of where you are in the world. So as you can see, record types that we support in BBCRM are things like a PO mail list, communities, constituents, events, memberships, plan givings, uh, prospect plans, proposed. Um, and we, we continue to expand this list as BlackBot develops their API for BlackBot, we continue to develop integrations. So you can expect this list to grow as, as uh, we continue to grow that partnership that, that PaperSave and, and BlackBot has together. So let's actually take a look about, take a look at what a document management looks like within PaperSave. So we have that native integration into BBCRM, right? So let's take a look at a constituent record, for example. I'm gonna go ahead and um, search for a constituent here. We'll use our first one as an example. But if you've never seen PaperSafe before, PaperSafe is a native tile in your records, okay? So when you are adding documents to records, just go into that um, constituent, go into that event, that membership, and you'll have that native tile, right? Also worth mentioning, this is all governed by security, which we'll actually see on today's uh, demo. We'll, we'll dive in a little bit on how we create and how we manage and categorize things in PaperSafe. So you'll get to see a little bit about that coming forward here in a couple of seconds. So direct integrations into your records, add documents, click, and you'll have access to those documents right at your fingertips. 
Okay. We'll also do, um, as you can see, other integrations in different areas in BBCRM. It's going to be that same paper safe tile, right? To give you that same look and feel tethered to BBCRM. So you always have the ability to um, kind of navigate through paper safe pretty safely as, as it looks just like what BBCRM has been designed for. Okay. So document management, pretty easy uh, in paper safe. So let's talk about how we do categorizations in paper safe for your document management. So in paper safe, we have what is called document types, right? So I'll show you what that looks like here. I'll add a document, right? So I'm adding a document to events, right? So we have what is called a document type. Think about document types as a file cabinet, right? So you are able to, in paper save, create a file cabinet, name it according to what type of documents you're, you're wanting to store in paper save. And now you have a repository that is named to that category, right? These are all what we call document types and they're fully customizable in paper save, right? So ultimately we can go into our document management here. We'll look at um, all of our BBCRM document types. So these are repositories that are designed right out of the box, right? Nothing that you need to do there, but you also have the ability to expand upon that, right? So if you wanted to add a document type, you could to any of these record types that PaperSafe supports. Alongside of PaperSafe having that native integration inside of BBCRM, we also have areas for other things that don't necessarily have um, records in BBCRM, but you may have documents laying around in boxes that you may want to put in PaperSafe for safekeeping. We have ways for you to bring those in into PaperSafe and, and categorize them and get the security over those documents so that the group of folks that need to see them have access to them. So creating a document type in PaperSafe, fairly simple, whether you're doing this at a record level, right? Because for example, here under um, events, we saw that we have events documentation, but I can also add uh, another one if I'd like, just to have, for example, more uh, different types of documents categorized under events, for example, right? So I could have uh, an event layout, I can have an event agreement or something like that, and um, just categorize them accordingly in paper safe, right? So let's go ahead and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and hit add a document or add a document type. Here, you can go ahead and name that document type, again, whatever you would like. So let's use a uh, contracts as an example, okay? And here is the security for those document types, right? So you are able to secure your documents and make sure that only the people that you want have access to your document types, right? So you can create a document type. We'll save that into the system. And here is what we call profile fields, right? So in PaperSafe, we use profile fields to categorize the type of documents that you're adding into the system, right? So we have now a file cabinet called events. Now we can add different tags to bring out information out of those documents that are useful for you to look for and search for those documents in PaperSafe, right? So for example, um, for this, contrast documentation, I can add something called like date field, right? And again, all of these are searchable fields that you can create. So I can use a date. And now I have a date box that I can use as part of how I can categorize the type of documents I am putting into the system, right? So in paper save, again, we can do something like comments and have something like a comment box or a text area. And this is now a place where a user, while they're adding documents to paper save, they can add further information about those documents that they're adding, right? Which again, all of those fields that we're creating, right, are all searchable, which you'll see how we, we search for fields in, in, uh, in a couple of minutes here, right? So, Think about PaperSafe as a document management software that you can categorize, tag your documents so that you have easily accessibility to all of those documents, regardless of where you are 
in the world, right? So PaperSafe is cloud-based. So as long as you have a browser, you will be able to get to your documents regardless of where you are. All right, so next thing I wanna talk about is getting documents into PaperSafe, right? So many ways to get documents into PaperSafe. We have support to local scanners. We have what is called scan later, right? Which I'll explain what that means in a second. Electronic submissions, the ability to browse through a network directly, uh, network direct directory somewhere and attach a file, and also email monitoring, right? It all depends on what processes you're using in PaperSafe, but we have many touch points as to how documents make it into PaperSafe, which gives flexibility to anybody in, in your organization to be able to contribute and add documents to the system, right? So let's go back to our BBCRM. And let's say, for example, I wanted to add a document to a constituent, right? So let me go ahead and um, get to a constituent here and show you what that looks like. So we'll use a concrete as an example, but let's say I wanted to add a document to this record. So I have a couple of options here in the paper safe towel. You can click on that plus sign, right? And now that brings the add document window to paper safe. So PaperSafe does support local scanners. So if you have a local scanner plugged in into your machine that is Twain driver compliant, that is something that PaperSafe can plug and play with. Whether that scanner is Twain driver compliant, it's not something that we expect you to know, but um, just send us over that scanner and model number and we'll always be able to check that for you and see the compliancy over or any of those local hardwares that you may have with PaperSafe. But, Takeaway, if you have a local scanner, most likely PaperSafe can connect to that local scanner. The way that this works is you can put documents into that scanner, click on scan now, and all of those documents are pulled into PaperSafe as part of your document management. Now, if, for example, you're entering a record in BBCRM and you potentially don't have that supporting document that goes along with that record, we also have what is called scan later. Scan later works as follows. So I am entering, for example, a new constituent or a new revenue gift, and I may not have the supporting documents for that record. I can click on print or generate barcode for scan later. And what that does is it puts a pending marker on that record, right? And it actually generates a barcode that gets printed and you can hold on to that barcode. The vision here is that that barcode is a pending marker onto this record. So ultimately, once you do receive that supporting document in the mail, now you can grab that barcode, put it on top of that supporting document and scan that into PaperSafe and PaperSafe will automatically direct that into the right constituent, right? That is something that we call scan later. We also do support, for example, the new technologies from Fujitsu. Fujitsu is a very good network scanner and local scanner that um, we test a lot of our softwares with. Fujitsu did come out with a new network scanner called the Fujitsu FI NX series, which basically is a network scanner that works for multiple users, right? So it acts as if it was a local scanner. So within this network scanner, put it into in a central spot where all your users are at. And instead of buying local scanners, they can all share one network scanner, right? So it's very neat, new technology from Fujitsu. And ultimately drag and drop. So adding documents to PaperSave, if you already have a virtual file, if somebody sends you an email, these are things that you can literally drag and drop to PaperSave or even browse through your environment, right? And find where those documents are select an agreement, for example, and bring that right over to PaperSafe for safekeeping, right? So document management and acquisition, again, it's fairly simple. And this is what you're seeing here is how you add a document. And again, those, those uh, tags that we talked about, which again, brings uh, more attention and, and more focus to the type of documents that you're putting into the system. So remember, lots of ways to get documents into PaperSafe really all depends on on what you have available, but 
most likely than not, there's always going to be a way for you to get items into the system. All right, so document search is a big one for us. We talked about adding document types, which helps you categorize the documents. We talked about adding profile fields that you can add tags to documents to, again, bring some data out of those documents to be easily read and easily accessible. But also all of, those, all of that data in those profile fields are searchable data, right? So in PaperSafe, we can search two ways, simple, meaning you can just provide it a simple value like a constituent name, like a dollar amount, a fund ID, a revenue batch, and PaperSafe is gonna search everywhere in the PaperSafe database for that information. We also do have advanced searching, right? Advanced searching now can be used numerous ways, including for reporting purposes, right? And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. But advanced search now uses a combination of all of those profile fields that we're using to tag items in PaperSafe. Now we can use either one or a combination of those fields to search in PaperSafe a little deeper, okay? Ultimately pulling information out of PaperSafe with a little bit more accuracy. Right, so I'll show you what that looks like. So we'll go to our homepage, right? For those of you that have not seen PaperSafe before, this is our homepage. Homepage gives you access to a lot of what we call our standalone applications, our search option being one of those, right? So right from within our home application, you can click on search and get to our search engine. So again, search works in multiple ways. Simple search we'll see first, which basically, again, if you have constituent name, dollar amount, or even a batch, right, which could be also used for reporting, provide this to higher learning if needed. But ultimately, you can search in PaperSafe for that value. Again, we're looking everywhere in the PaperSafe database for that information. Now you have all of that information, all of that document related to a batch that was processed, okay? If you wanted to maybe select that information and share it with your team members, you do have sharing options here, right? Whether you're sharing a file, maybe the user that you're sharing this may not be a paper save user. So that would be an instance where you share things as a file um, you can also email a link if folks are PaperSafe users and they have rights to those documents, or even just copy a link and put that into a chat so that um, you can share that with the team. Um, maybe this request came from a Teams chat or, or Slack or whatever the case may be, right? So get to your documents, put that into, um, into a, a way that you can share that with your team members, right? And this is totally outside of PaperSafe, so it can also be used by team members that are not necessarily BBCRM users, right? So again, giving uh, your team members access to documents as long as you give them permissions to access documents in PaperSafe, right? So simple search, again, simple value, one value, we'll searching everywhere in the PaperSafe database for that information. Now here, we do have what is called advanced search. Right, so advanced search, that is where we are leveraging all of those fields, right? And we can do this anywhere in BBCRM that we have our integration, right? So for example, now I can add a condition, right? So you do have the ability to add conditions while you're doing advanced searching, whether you wanna do an and or an or, you can group values together to search by, or just simply add your conditions, right? When you add your conditions, you're basically adding those profile fields that we're using to tag documents in PaperSafe, right? So if I wanted to maybe search by a date range is a, is a good one, right? For example, I click on date field. Maybe the date field is less than today's date. I can always add another date field and say that that's gonna be greater than. So that's gonna give me a way for me to search between timeframes here, right? 
And I can say, how about January, right? From January to uh, current date. Um, but I can always, again, continue to restrict what I'm looking for. Maybe I'm looking for things of a specific amount or something that of, of significant value, right? So I want to uh, maybe want to see anything that is greater than $300, right? And again, any of those fields in PaperSafe are searchable. So you can add an appeal, add a reviewer, or add a gift processor to see a, a maybe a list of items that are certain gift processor um, processed type of pledges or whatever the case may be. Ultimately, building yourself a search criteria to pull information of a specific nature out of paper safe, right? So that's what advanced searching is for, to make sure that when the time comes that you need to look for data across maybe multiple different criteria, that now using our paper safe profile fields, those tags that we're adding to those documents, that we're able to search accordingly, right? So here, we're going to go ahead and click search. Again, we're searching everywhere in the paper safe database for those search criteria, and, and we get our return values here, right? With all of the information regarding if this maybe came from a workflow or from a, a, a revenue batch creation that you'll see in a little bit here. Cool things about it is that if you do spend five, 10, 15 minutes, maybe creating and testing and, and building your refined search, the cool thing about it is that you are, you do have the ability to save that search, okay? So no efforts is gone to waste. If you do spend, again, some time getting that criteria just right to what you're looking for, save that search, right? If you think if something that your team members can benefit from, when you save it, you can actually share that with other users, right? Or you can just save that for yourself entirely up to you, right? So you can save that search, um, share it if you like. If you do share it with other users, either way, it will be stored right here under load save searches. Here, you're able to grab your results from your reports at any time, right? And there's no limitations. You can add as many reports as you want or as many advanced searches saved as you like. Also worth mentioning that um, maybe I created this search a couple of weeks ago. Maybe today the searching criteria is the same, but the values in that search criteria might be different. Just load your search, use your dropdown, and now you can modify the criteria as needed, right? So you can always make edits, add more criteria, and ultimately get to those documents that you need in the system fairly easy. So advanced search, if you're not using it now, or if you're looking into paper safe for document management, very good ways to get documents out of the system and ultimately get those documents right at your fingertips. All right, so next thing I wanna talk about here is our ability to redact information, right? So what is more important for donors to know that we're keeping their, their uh, data sensitive, their sensitive data uh, well kept in PaperSafe, right? As a document management software, we want to make sure that what we're putting in PaperSafe is well kept and safe. So PaperSafe does have redaction. Redaction comes in PaperSafe in uh, three ways. We have manual redaction, where you actually have a way to select what data you want to redact in a record or in a document, for example. And we have redaction in transit. If you are using our automation workflows, and as an organization, you do not want to capture any bank and routing uh, data in PaperSafe, we can actually put some configurations in PaperSafe to redact bank and routing uh, numbers from these checks as they're traveling into our workflows, which you'll see in a little bit as well, right? So we do have the ability to do redaction in transit. Also, we do now have the ability to do historical redaction. So for those uh, maybe existing PaperSafe clients, that may want to redact some data. Well, right now, worth mentioning, we are able to do social security number and tax IDs for 
historical reduction, but hopefully in the future we'll expand to, to more data, right? But basically, if there are documents in the system that may have either social security numbers or taxes IDs that you wanna have redacted automatically, that's something that now in PaperSafe we can do. So let's take a quick look about uh, on what redaction looks like. All right, so redaction in transit. I'll show you that here real quick. So documents coming in into PaperSafe to our workflows happens in many ways, which we'll dive in in a little bit, but let's look at that redaction option. So basically what happens is as these documents are traveling into PaperSafe for your batch creation, we are able to automatically redact information, right? So this item is coming in into PaperSave. Once PaperSave analyzes the document, we're going to apply some rules and ultimately PaperSave is going to be able to now redact that information for us, okay? So redaction automatically happens when these documents come in into the workflow we'll be able to now apply redaction to your bank and routing information to make sure that that sensitive data from your constituents is safe, right? Now, if, it, if this check for some reason had a tax ID or the social security of that constituent, again, that's something that if it's in the system, we can redact um, automatically. We do also have redaction manually here as part of our annotations. So as the gift processor or the revenue batch processor, if you wanna redact some information from documents or even from a document management standpoint, if you're adding documents into a specific record and you wanna redact some information, you do have the ability to do that as part of our annotations, okay? Now it's worth mentioning that redaction is permanent. Right, so once you redact something in a document and you save that redaction, right? You tell paper save that yes, this is something that I wanna keep. Redaction is permanent and is burned onto the image and it cannot be undone, okay? So even when you share or download this document outside of paper save, redaction would be part of that document going forward. Okay, so let's talk about how we help clients with our batch processing, right? Our revenue batch processing in BBCRM. So we do have what is called workflows in PaperSafe. Um, we use workflows to automate business processes for clients, right? So a workflow has what we call OCR, which is our optical character recognition, which basically is artificial intelligence that is reading information right off of those documents that you're feeding PaperSafe to help you with the coding of those documents. And ultimately we have auto entry that grabs all of that information that OCR read out of these documents and that, that get the revenue batch processor validated. And now we can create that um, batch for you in BBCRM. Okay, so that is something that we're helping our clients with a lot with is getting batches into BBCRM more accurately and a lot quicker because we're helping with all of that data entry. At this point, the revenue batch processor really just validates that the batch is accurate and then ultimately gets that batch created in BBCRM automatically, which we'll see here in just a second. So we'll start off with, okay getting documents into a workflow for processing, right? So we talked about capturing methods, how to get documents into records. Um, now we're, we're kind of touching back on getting documents, but instead of records, we're talking about how you would get documents into a batch for processing, right? Within PaperSafe. So again, in, in a workflow, the, the vision here is that you're going to add all of your revenue checks into PaperSafe PaperSafe is going to use OCR to analyze those documents. Once we analyze those documents, then the gift processor or that revenue batch processor can validate and then ultimately have that batch created for you automatically, okay? So multiple ways to get documents into the system. 
We still support that local scanner, right? That same network scanner is still supported, right? So you don't have to get multiple hardwares. Once you purchase a scanner, that's something that you're going to be able to use in PaperSafe through the longevity, right? So really all depends on what type of documents you're scanning into PaperSafe. But if you're scanning documents with correspondence letters, with envelopes, a local scanner tend to, tends to be a, a good fit because a local scanner has the ability for you to um, scan in different sizes of documents, right? So you can have the check, you can have an acknowledgement letter, you can have the envelope and so on. A desktop scanner gives you that ability. Um, we do have supports for check scanners, but those are limited in size, right? That's only going to allow you to scan in just checks into the system it doesn't really work well if you're trying to also uh, have some of that supporting document alongside of that revenue check that you're adding into the system. Okay. Drag and drop. So we touched based on that, but the way that drag and drop works on the workflow side of things is pretty neat because we can do a couple of things um, when it comes to drag and drop. Again, it all depends on how you're getting those checks, right? So um, if you are, for example, getting a lockbox download, something that we support in PaperSafe, right? So maybe you are working with a lockbox provider and they're giving you a PDF with a bunch of uh, revenue checks on them that now need to be processed and, and have entered into the system. So with PaperSafe, if you have a stack or a or a pdf that has multiple checks in them you can actually grab that pdf and drag that whole pdf into paper safe the only requirements is that is one check per page but if it is one check per page paper safe will be able to separate that for you regardless if it's one large pdf with a hundred checks and supporting documents just make sure that is a check your supporting documents, and then the next check as a one whole PDF, bring that into the system and PaperSafe will be able to separate that for you, right? So if it's something that's coming in from a lockbox, most often than not, it's something that now we can deal with in PaperSafe. Just drag that PDF, let us separate that for you. Then that analytical OCR work happens. And then ultimately you get that batch separated and coded and ready for that revenue batch processor to just review and enter that batch into the system, okay? So let's show you a little bit about what this all looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple of documents to process. And I'm going to bring that right into PaperSafe. All right, so as your documents are traveling right into PaperSafe, we are going to execute OCR, right? And again, we can also have that redaction in place, but OCR just finished for us that quickly, right? So really what OCR did for us is it's looking at that information on the check and it's going and reaching your BBCRM database, right? It's looking at the constituent table in your BBCRM database and it's trying to make a match based on the address on these checks, right? Whether they're written or printed, um, OCR, believe it or not, does a very good job when it comes to handwritten um, checks. It's really about giving PaperSafe a couple of those handwritten checks when you're getting implemented and we'll run those through PaperSafe and adjust things a little bit to make sure that you're getting the best value out of OCR when it comes to those handwritten checks, right? But if you can make out what it, it says on the handwritten information, then most likely OCR will be able to grab that as well. Um, so OCR looked at that address, and based on that address, we were able to find the constituent, right? Alongside of that constituent, we're also pulling the check amount, okay? And it highlights yellow on the document just because we want clients to know where OCR pulled that value from, right? So it's pulling that um, amount, it's also pulling that date, okay? Um, and it's all coming right from within the document, okay? So ultimately, OCR is going to read information right off of your documents and get those right into the system for you. Now, I will say this, if some of your coding, such as like your appeal, is, is maybe part of your supporting documents that you're adding 
alongside your check. Um, this is something that we might be able to um, teach OCR to read as well, right? So if it is some of these things that are captured in, in, uh, in documents that you're putting along with your revenue batch, uh, again, we just need some examples of what that looks like. And most likely this is uh, values uh, or information that we'll be able to pull right from these uh, checks and your supporting documents to help you with the coding of your batch. But ultimately, OCR is here to read information out of the documents and help you with the coding of the batch as much as possible, right? Based on what it can read off of these documents. Ultimately, this is your paper safe workflow, right? So a gift processor is going to process uh, their batches from within PaperSafe are going to do it from within the workflow here. So a couple of things to highlight is that we do have email notifications. So if your batch processors or your, your revenue batch processors are not the ones scanning the documents, that may be the front office. We do have the ability to send out email notifications to alert your gift processors, your batch revenue processors that there is a way that there is a batch pending their, their process, right? So we can send out an email notification, let folks know that we have things to process so that batches don't sit waiting um, for somebody to kind of find them, so to speak, right? You never know who is scanning them. If it is the front office or the file room, they might be opening up all of the mail and scanning in those checks. They have an ability to notify that gift processor, that revenue batch processor that their items are ready to process. Ultimately, here is the workflow. Now that batch processor is going to validate to make sure that all of these checks are good. Um, if there are any redactions needed, again, you have your annotations, you have ways to highlight information. If you'd like, if you wanna redact manually, you can. If you want to add comments, you have a comment box, but you also have a sticky note that you can add Right, so you do have ways to make corrections or just uh, notes onto the gift, right? So again, as I mentioned, redaction is permanent, but these annotations can be hidden if you have the permissions to do so. All right, ultimately that revenue batch processor can validate, click on the next item on their list, make any changes. If there's any changes, right? These all, all of these fields are fields that you're able to edit to make changes on if need be, but ultimately correct any, make any corrections if needed. You do have percent signs here. These are how accurate OCR was to find the right values out of your gifts. So you do have some sense of uh, how accurate OCR is doing while reading data off of your gifts, right? So review all of your batch. Once your batch is reviewed, select all of those items and submit that right into BBCRM, okay? So ultimately we review all of our items, OCR codes them for us, we review them, click a button, and now that batch, it goes straight into uh, BBCRM for us to validate and commit, right? So it's worth mentioning that all of those batches that PaperSafe creates goes into the system as a, uh, as a unapproved uh, batch, right? So you would have to approve it, commit it, and then ultimately send that into the system. Now, we do have the ability to create GIFs outside of batching, okay? So if you wanna create a batch, we, we support that. And if you wanna do batching outside of, um, or create GIFs outside of batching, that is something that we're able to do as well. Okay, so you do have options there. It's not one or the other. We do have the options to do both. Um, just again, something that we would just take your lead on as to what uh, makes sense for the environment. Okay, so let me send some of these items back in here so that I can show you what that looks like. For the batch creation, we do have the ability to name your batch. Okay, so if I wanna name my batch, I have the ability to do that real quick. So what I'm gonna do here is update and name my batch accordingly. So I'm gonna do my initials. Today is the 11th, 2024. All right, so that is my batch number, right? So I do have the ability to name a batch, 
If I have a naming convention that you're currently using, you can continue to use that in paper safe. Ultimately, you can have a free text file uh, batch name where you can give it a name or again, continue to use whatever naming convention you're currently using. Worth mentioning that some of our BBCRM clients currently create batches using templates. PaperSafe supports that as well, okay? So if you have templates for your batch creation, that is something that um, we can do as well, okay? Ultimately, again, review all of that batch, click Submit, and that batch goes into BBCRM um, to, to be created and validated, right? And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. Now, we do have a reject the step of the workflow, right? That is because we do respect all of the rules that BBCRM has in place, right? So far, nothing has been rejected, but if you are sending some data to BBCRM and it's missing some coding, it's missing an appeal, it's missing some sort of uh, information that is required for you to create that batch in BBCRM, it will be rejected, okay? We are not able to create a batch in the system if it's not coded properly. So it will be rejected. It will be put into a rejected step. Again, a notification can be sent out to um, whomever if in case there is divide in responsibilities there, right? In case you wanna have um, a manager review anything that is rejected, we can send out a notification to that manager to review those rejected items. Okay, so let's take a look at what we are creating in BBCRM, right? So I'm gonna go into my batch entry. So this is what individual uh, submissions look like, right? So we create a batch for individual ones outside of, of a, a full batch, or you can group them all together. As I've done here, we can edit our batch, all right? So these are all the items that I've pushed through PaperSafe, right? So that's sort of what happens, right? You create your batch. OCR is going to analyze all of that data for you, help you with that coding. Ultimately, once you have all of that data validated, click a button that batch is created for you here. BBCRM is business as usual, right? You're going to validate your batch, make sure that batch is validated and all of the data in there is accurate, update your project totals, save all of that information, and now you can commit that batch, right? Let's go ahead and grab that information real quick so that um, we can pull that up in a bit, but ultimately now start that process and we are now committing that batch, okay? And there it is, batch has been committed successfully. So all of those documents, right? All of those documents that came from within our paper safe workflow have now been associated to all of those revenue gifts that have been added into the system, okay? Let's take a look at that real quick. We can search for our batch, there it is. And let's pick on uh, next, Gen data systems here. But ultimately, this is what we were able to create, right? Here is one of those uh, GIFs created. Here is the document associated to that record. You can open up that document. And um, here is a copy of that check. You do have what we call workflow history, right? So there is accountability for who created this check, right? This gift into the system. So we do document who processed it. If you ever audit it, this is something that you can download out of the system fairly easy and provide that to an auditor. Um, and they do not need to be a paper safe user for that, right? So basically they get some information as to how that gift was coded. If there was redacted, redaction would be part of that. And then who participated in the creation of that gift, right? All from within our paper safe application. All right. So how other organizations use it. So worth mentioning, right? Um, University of Miami uses a paper safe to close large gifts from a custom catalog of 80,000 monument naming opportunities, right? So um, one of our Florida most esteemed pri uh, private research institutions with over 17,000 students from around the world, right? And, um, you know, one way to get documents and 
and and one way to have access to documents or get things in front of your users for for uh, managing documents in in general is through PaperSafe, right? So um, problems that they had, COVID, you know how COVID uh, affected us all. Um, trying to uh, you know mitigate through the times it was difficult. Trying to collect for things such as buildings, plagues, small monuments, or etc. was was quite difficult, right? So PaperSafe kind of stepped in with being able to kind of uh, be that central spot for them to manage all of their documents and and be be able to access all of that data at their fingertips, right? Um, for another one of our our clients, one of their pain points was, you know, large organization with documents stored in numerous areas outside of BBCRN with no interrelations with BBCRN whatsoever, right? They were entering all of their gift processes manually. So again, this is something that PaperSafe kind of stepped in and helped them with that problem, right? Having that central spot for all of their documents, be able to have a uh, revenue batch processing that will get documents into the system accurately and fast. And again, have that benefit of time saving, removing you know un unnecessary steps out of the process and making sure that again, you have visibility of where your documents are at all steps of the process. All right, so if you have any questions for us, please feel free to reach out. You do have Valerie, our super senior account executive here that's always able to help us with any questions or or can get you any answers that you may need, right? So with that, I'll turn it over to Valerie to close us out. Hi, Julio. Um, thank you everyone for um, joining today. We do have a couple of questions awesome. uh, that I want to address while we have a couple of minutes left. Also, this is um, recorded, so we'll send this out um, to all of the attendees as well. So one of the questions that came over mm -hmm. is, are we able to customize the transaction and record types for BBCRM? So that's a great question. So customization wise, you can always add different document types, you can different different tags, and, and we can always um, add more as we build the application. So um, Customizing the record types that exist at the moment, it really all depends on what the client is looking for. We can always add new columns, new new data, as long as it, it exists in BBCRM. So it all depends on what the client's needs are, but we're always open to, to kind of having that discussion with our clients. Great question. Great, thank you. And then another one, what would you say the most valuable BBCRM specific features um, would be and and why? Yeah, I, I would have to say that, you know, revenue batch automation, right, goes hand in hand with document management, right? Get all your documents into paper safe, very streamlined process and have that central spot for all of your clients, regardless of where they are in the world to be able to access those documents. So document management with that revenue automation, is always goes hand in hand. Yeah, that's key. Thank you. Um, and then for the redaction, can we set that up or are there defaults? Can it automatically be redacted? Um, like bank account numbers, check routing numbers? Yeah, that's a great question. All of that is possible. So we can automatically redact that bank routing information. Um, as you saw on the screen, we can do that fairly easy. Um, again, we have that historical redaction. So if you have uh, tax IDs or social security numbers, we can go back to do that and always have that manual redaction at your fingertips. So you can always do that manual option as well. But we can always redact your bank routing information. Fairly simple in PaperSafe. Fantastic. And then there is one more question that we might need to involve our security team, but um, it's based on the security site. Is it specific or separate from this site or from so, the site? Yeah, so that's a great question for, for clients coming on board for the first time. That makes perfect sense. So every client that on boards PaperSafe gets deployed on their own tenant, right? A known tenant in our PaperSafe Azure environment 
that tenant includes a, a their own paper safe database where all of these documents that you're adding are stored, right? So every client gets a paper safe database, a paper safe tenant, and all of that information is stored in that specific tenant that's only accessible by that client. Very good question. Very good. Did that answer all of the questions? Are there additional questions before we wrap up today? Thank you everyone for taking the time to meet with us today. Very good. Yes. Thank you all for your time. Um, really appreciate it. And if there are additional questions, please reach out. Uh, again, we'll be sending you a follow-up on the recorded uh, webinar and, and happy to connect directly as well.